नमस्ते 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 स्वाति नमस्ते एंड गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी अ वेरी हार्टफुल वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू इन टुडेस सत्संग सो हैप्पी टू सी यू ऑल यस स्वाति इज माय वॉइस क्लियर यस अनीश इट्स एब्सोल्युटली क्लियर सो हैप्पी टू बी विद ऑल ऑफ यू वंस अगेन टुडे मॉर्निंग Uh, after long travels, uh, we are back at the base in Dharam Shala. Uh, it feels that this satsang I am uh, uh, joining all of you after a very long time from our Dharam Shala base. <laughs> I think previous uh, two three sessions um, uh, we attended from the travels from different locations. So. the mountains are looking very happy today the sun is out there shining very bright after intense rains everywhere you look around it's all lush green as if the rain gods have washed the entire prakriti um, so it's a very joyful feeling this morning to look at the the mountains from my window and then look at you all the beautiful uh, shiva faces all around uh so with that swati we can now uh, begin today's satsang g yes. so uh our first question is anonymous and uh, the seeker is asking due to some personal challenges and family issues i feel trapped in a vicious cycle of negativity this is not allowing me to focus and move ahead in life I want closure on my family issues. I want to focus my positive energy on addressing pending activities and moving ahead in life. How can I do it? Please guide. Interesting. I think uh, this too, like many others, seems to be a question which everybody at some point of their life grapples with. Uh, let's look at uh, so first the hard thing the hard truth and the hard truth is you are solely responsible for your own karmas whatever you do the karmas that you create the fruit of that karma be it positive or negative or neutral will be born by you and you alone not by your family many times we do things in life saying that i'm doing this for the sake of my family but always remember you're all alone in on this spiritual path in this spiritual sadhana you're all alone you get support by a lot of people around lot of things around you contribute to the lives of many people but essentially in this karmic cycle you're all alone and the proof of that is when you go to sleep when you're in deep sleep in the night you do not even know the person your wife your husband whosoever is sleeping by your side you do not even know them in sleep all the notions of the relationships disappear because mind disappears and the moment mind comes back when you wake up all the notions of the relationships come back and you consider these relations as real and you consider these four people five people of your family as your family that's where the problem is so first point the hard point here is you are individually solely responsible for your karmas the burden of your karmas will not be borne by your family the burden of their karmas will not be borne by you yeah you experience sukha and dukha pains and pleasure with them because of your entanglement with them but your karma is happening within you know this as a truth and conduct your life accordingly that's principle number 1 today now coming on the more practical level issues in the family we want closure we want to move ahead in life it is not something new or individual that you alone is 
uh, you alone are grappling with. Yeah. 5,000 years ago, a great war happened in India. We know that war as the Yudh, the war of Mahabharata, where Krishna, the story revolves around Krishna and his teachings to his student, Arjun, in the middle of that battlefield. What was that battle all about? The battle was the same, which is raging in your heart also, that Arjun, Arjun's entire extended family, was doing something which is against the dharma. And because of that situation, the war became impossible to avoid. But Arjun felt in his heart that how can he wage a war against his own family, people with whom he has grown up with, his cousins, his uncles, even his teachers who've taught them the entire skill of Warcraft. How can he be at war with them? How can he take arms against them? And if the situation be, how can he kill them? How will he do this war? And at the battlefield, he just wanted to run away from this situation. He just wanted to move out. He just wanted to take sannyasa. Not the real sannyasa, but sannyasa when you want to run away from your responsibilities because you can't face them. I use the word responsibilities. So in the entire Gita, Sri Krishna is just trying to tell him and teach him and awaken him. That do not consider people who are opposite in the camp. Do not feel more attachment with them because they are part of your family. Because you know them, because you've grown up with them. Do not feel this attachment. Because this attachment is what creates entanglement. And this entanglement does not allow you to do what is right. Let me repeat. This entanglement does not allow you to do what is right. And you get stuck. And remember the first principle. You are solely responsible for your karmas, good or bad. So which means, because of this entanglement, hey Arjun, you'll not be able to do what is right, what is your dharma, what is the righteous conduct at this moment, what is ought to be done. And if you don't do that, the burden of the karma, only you will have to suffer. Nobody else in the family. Yeah. And that is when Sri Krishna gave this essential teaching to Arjun, saying that what is ought to be done in whatever situation you are in, difficult or easy, whatever is the right thing to do, do that rightfully. That's your dharma. And only that will take you to peace. Otherwise, this peace, this joyfulness that you're looking for in life will keep running away from you. You will only get this peace, this joyfulness when you do the right thing rightfully. Yeah. And you can only do the right thing rightfully when you are not entangled. That was a central message of Sri Krishna to his disciple Arjun because the fight was within the family. Learn from that. The second teaching which Sri Krishna gave to Arjuna is, whatever Arjun you are doing in this situation, offer that to me. Meaning, know that there is an existential divinity all around. Do not be entangled now in the bhav of karta, which means the bhav of doership. You are not doing anything. Just become a medium medium for the existence to work through you, which means whatever you do, offer it to the divine. Offer it to the divine saying that I'm not doing this for my personal gain, for my personal attachment, for my personal entanglement. I'm doing this because I believe this is the right thing. My buddhi tells me this is the right thing. My heart tells me this is the right thing. Hence, give me the strength to do the right thing. 
and offer this to you, to the divinity. And now I'm not even looking at the fruits of that. Good fruit come, bad fruit comes, I'm not even looking at that. You see, you're totally disattached, disentangled with the situation. Because the moment you get entangled with the situation, saying that this is my family, these are my friends, how do I conduct myself? You'll become weak. If you have to do something which is not in their favor, but that's the right thing to do, you'll not be able to do because you'll become weak. This entanglement will make you weak. It will suck your willpower, your strength from within. That's the entire teachings that Sri Krishna gave to Arjun. My recommendation to you would be, go and read Bhagavad Gita very slowly and meditate on each sutra and you will understand what I'm trying to tell you in this short span. Yeah. And the third principle in this is, <clears throat> In India, we use a phrase in Sanskrit called Vasudevaya Kutumbakam. This entire Prakriti, this entire world is my family. The entire Vasudha, earth, Kutumbakam, family. This entire earth, entire earth is my family. Why do I consider these four people, five people as part of my world? My world is very big. 8.6 billion are part of your family. These are just human beings I'm talking about. All sentient beings are part of your family. This entire earth is your family. Start to expand your consciousness to that level. Right now, your ego says four people. Expand your ego. Include everyone as part of your family. And then this detachment will start to happen. Yeah. When you expand, the detachment happens. When you expand the entanglements, the chains of entanglements are broken away. But you, when you contract, that not entire earth, these four people are just part of my family. Entanglement comes back. I'm giving you a principle today. Expansion of the self inside, inclusiveness of everybody as part of your family, part of your world, will free you from attachment and entanglement. Opposite of that, which means when you shrink, the attachment and entanglements will become much more stronger. The change will become much more stronger. Think on this. Meditate on this. And as I said earlier, try and read Bhagavad Gita. You'll get more deeper answers in this situation. Hope it helps. Thank you. Iswati. Before we read the next question, let me tell you, <clears throat> in these sessions, in these satsangs, it's my wish and pray that I share the deepest truth of life with you, not just on the surface level, to ease out your current situation, but try to show you a deeper dimension, the deeper truth of life as it works, as, is, as it operates, as I experience it. yeah. So that we go to the root and fix it from there itself. Because otherwise, day after day, new situations will keep emerging. And every situation, you will run away and try to find the answer. yeah. But if you understand the root once and for all, all situations then will start to disappear. I mean, they will be there, but your dilemmas will disappear. Because more or less, there are core things that we get stuck with. Yeah. So through different questions and through different ways, I try to take you to that core. Once that's resolved, everything is resolved. Yeah. All right. Now, Swatiji, we can go to the next one. <laughs> the question is, how to be immune from your loved one's behavior if it hurts you ever? And should we listen to our heart instead of our parents if it's our life's decision? <laughs> it seems today family is at the focus. Huh? <laughs> Similar question. 
Well, you can't be immune from the hurt of your loved ones. It is impossible. Don't even try that. What am I trying to tell you? Till the time they are your loved ones, you can't be immune. Till the time this sense is they are mine, the problem persists. That's, with the, that's the root of the problem. Your parents, your siblings, your loved ones are not yours. Don't own them. Like you, they too are part of the divinity. Like you, they too are individual beings. Like you, they do have their own likes and dislikes. Like you, they have their own flaws. Like you, they have their own hopes and desires. Like you, they too are trapped by their own conditioning. So two trapped beings trying to come together, they'll not be able to merge. They'll hurt each other because two trapped beings, you follow. <clears throat> so till the time we operate from this notion that this set of people are mine, I am related to them, I own them. You can never be immune. That's the root of the problem. I'm saying again and again, this entire Vasundara, this entire earth is your family. Why must not this entire earth be your loved ones? Every sentient being on this earth be your loved one. Once you operate like that, these hurts will disappear only and only then. That's sutra number one. Sutra number two. Are you in this life to take hurt from people? No. You are getting hurt because your focus is outward on people's behavior. What do they do? How do they behave with you? How do they talk to you? Your entire focus is on them. If they don't operate the way you like, you'll be hurt. Let me repeat that. If they do not operate the way you like, you will be hurt. And how many times will you go and request and plead them to behave in the way you like? Do you follow the whole complexity here? Because they will behave, do things as per their own buddhi, their own intellect. They all have individualized intellect. How will you train each intellect around you? Asambhav. This is impossible. All you can and you must do is bring the focus inward. It's you and you alone. What must you do? How must you live or conduct your life so that you are constantly stable? And for that, this level of detachment has to happen. That now the remote control of my joy, my happiness, my peace is not with anybody else, including my family. I regain the control back. That's when the immunity comes. When you regain the control back, you were born alone. with all the control switches inside you. As you grew up in life, you started giving these controls to people around you. Problem. Now, the associated thing, please understand this also very carefully. It does not mean you disown the family. It does not mean you disrespect the family. It does not mean you become non-compassionate to people around you. No, it does not mean that. All I'm saying is, you have the right to govern your life in a totally non-entangled way. Follow that path. The second part of the question was that uh, in some life decisions, should you hear what your heart says or follow what the family or the parents say? Well, your parents do have more experience of conducting life in this world more than you. They're more clever than you clever in ways of dealing with the world. If that is what you need to learn from them, please go learn it from them. 
they have learned the ways of existing in the world better than you. They have more experience in that. But what are your hopes and desires? Only you know. And you have the right to fulfill them. So listen to every advice people around you, including parents and loved ones, give you. Evaluate that advice. You're mature enough. If you're asking this question, I'm assuming you're mature enough to conduct your life according to you and not be dependent. If you're asking this question, I'm assuming you're mature enough for this. And if so, then listen to their advice, evaluate it, evaluate all the options and see what matches with your heart's desire. If it does match with your heart's desire, follow that. And if you think the ways of the world you need to learn from them, they have more experience than you, I'm saying. But if you know, or if you think, or if you want to live ways of the heart, then you have to follow the heart because I have seen most of the parents have missed this point. They have learned the ways of the world, but they have totally forgotten the ways of the heart. Ways of the heart, which takes you to love, to devotion, to bhakti, to Ishwara. They have forgotten that. They missed that. Because of the struggles of the life, they only learned ways of the world, not ways of the inner world of the heart. They missed that. I'm making a generalistic statement here. There will be exceptions, but most of the time I've seen. Yeah, consider these options. Ways of the world, ways of the heart. What is it that is important in your life? And make your decision based on that. And lastly, whenever you make a decision against them, following your heart, or with them, following their heart, whatever decision that you make, Know that very well in your heart that ultimately it's your decision. Even if it came as a suggestion from your parents, ultimately it is your decision. You signed on this. So be ready to own it up. Don't be a clever person here. That if the decision works out well, you say it was my decision. If the decision does not work out well, you say my parents forced me. Don't do that. Whatever decision you take, following your heart or following the advice of your parents, own the decision 100%. The rights and the wrongs of whatever will come from that decision, the profit or the loss, whatever comes from that decision, own that. Own that from day one, and that will bring you peace even if you lose something. Let me repeat that. When you own up a decision, that will bring you peace even if you lose something. Because in your heart, at least there will be satisfaction that I took the decision. Yeah. Think about this. Reflect on this. It will help. Thank you. Swati. A third question. Why manipulation is required to achieve something in life? Why is being real tough? It, it feels like society and our ecosystem doesn't value authenticity. Things on this. Uh, can you repeat the question once again, Swati? Why manipulation is required to achieve something in life? Why is being real tough? It feels society, it feels like society and our ecosystem doesn't value authenticity. Okay, manipulation. Why manipulation is required to achieve something? You know why? You want to hear the real truth today? Because of your fear and your hope and your desires, manipulations exist. There's a fear in your heart, there's a desire in your heart. And to fulfill that, you take any route, and the route most of the time is called manipulation. If there is no fear in your heart, please understand this. If there is no desire or lust 
in Hindi we call the word lobha, greed in your heart. Imagine you're conducting your work, your business. There is no fear. There is no greed. Let's stop here. Huh? There is no fear. There is no greed. Now you conduct your business. Will you try to do manipulation then? Think about it. You only do manipulation, people only do manipulation because of fear of losing something or the greed of acquiring more. If you do not have these two, you will conduct yourself, your business, your work, your life in a very sahaj way, simple, straight, direct way, in the most authentic way, the word that you use, authentic. It's not tough to be authentic, absolutely not. You say society, it seems, does not value authenticity. I'm asking you today, do you value authenticity? Forget about society. Do you value authenticity in you, not outside? We're not talking about outside yet. Within you, do you appreciate authenticity? Think hard on this. Number two, society does not value authenticity. Who is society? Who is this people called society? Where are they? Which country, which nation, which tribe, which religion are they part of? Who are these people called society? Have you ever thought about this? Kaun hai ye society? Ye samaj kaun hai? Who are these people? They are not the others. You are that society, my friend. You too are part of that. Society emerges from you. It is not something outside of you. Please understand this. You are the society. Society originates from within you. Whatever, whoever you are, that will be the reflection in the society outside. Society is here. And the reflection of this society is outside there, in the other world there. It's not different. So do not put blame of your weakness on the society. Reflect on this. I'm, I know this is hard. I've been a little too straight this morning. Reflect on this. Laugh on this the way I'm laughing on this. Yes, the fear and the greed. That makes you inauthentic. That makes people inauthentic. The day you decide in your heart, I will conduct my life in the most authentic way. I will not give any iota of my energy to the fear and the greed. I take this decision. And like I said earlier, I'm willing to pay any cost for this decision that I take. Then I'm not saying I'm not willing to pay the cost. I'm willing to pay every cost of this decision that I'm taking today of being absolutely authentic or free from the fear and greed. Let me conduct my work, my business, my life, my family now accordingly and see what I get. See what I get means not in the short term, in the long term, not in one transaction where you see, oh, you were authentic, the other party was not. That's a short term. Look in the long term. And the results do not just look out in the outside business deal. Also look out in the state of your heart and your mind. When you take this decision, your internal sthiti, your internal state will start to become extremely peaceful and joyful. That's another business game, by the way. <laughs> because in business, you're trying to earn name, fame, and money so that you're able to bring peace and joy. But here, it's happening from within. You follow? So. These are some of the thoughts. Society is you. It emerges from you. The way you conduct, that is how the, the world at large will start to conduct. It's a reflection. That's the truth. Number two, look at things in the long term, not just in short term. These are not deals or transactions that we are doing. These are transformational practices that we are doing. Long term horizon. Yeah, three, anything wrong that you do, you do largely because of two things, your fear and your greeds. 
slowly slowly lessen them a little bit every week lessen your fear and your greed a little bit and you will see in few months time you will largely be free from these two tendencies that's and only that's when authenticity will sprout from your heart it's there inside your heart we need right atmosphere so that it sprouts think on this it'll help the new one thank you our next question is being asked from someone uh, in la uh, he or she is asking how do i regain motivation and a sense of meaning in life standard epidemic which i'm seeing these days people want to be always motivated and happy seems like a new pandemic why why do you want to be always happy and motivated tell me it's like saying i always want daylight night i don't want i always want the sun to be out so that i'm able to see night i just don't like night so i don't want night will life happen like this ever no this thing that you call all life is made up of two polarities day and night sukha dukha good and bad these two polarities is what make life as a whole so which means motivation and demotivation are also two opposite you have to combine them to make this one whole nobody on earth can ever be motivated all the time and people who try to show that in new age happy world so to say the new age neo spiritual world so to say eventually they start to have a lot of mental diseases because they are just not accepting the other half of their life or their part which is down under sometime which is not joyful sometime that's also their other part they are trying to suppress it saying that no no this is bad i should be dancing all the time sorry it cannot happen if you want to live a healthy life a healthy spiritual life know it as a fact in your heart with every day night comes there will be moments of motivation there will be moments of lack of motivation accept that too sometimes the energies will be too rajasic motivation sometime energies will be little too tamasic demotivation tri guna will not go into that that's a big chapter will have to open otherwise but just understand this it is okay not to be motivated sometimes accept it that's how life is it is okay yeah so that's the first principle be easy on this be easy on this yeah the first principle the second principle is something about meaningfulness now that's where the real issue is so first this understanding that life is polarities mix bag sometime high sometime low it is all right first principle the second principle the meaningfulness now that's a big thing most of the time we have not found our real purpose in life there is nothing that drives my life consciously there is not one thing that consciously wakes me up every morning there is not one thing that i go to sleep with every night not one thing that's the problem we do not know our real purpose of birth on this earth what is the purpose of this incarnation we just do not know in the ashram these days we have started reading this very beautiful shastra scripture called shri bhagavatam the bhagavatam is the scripture on the life of narayana krishna and the various incarnation that narayana took on earth and one of the incarnation of course as we know is krishna 
This entire scripture is a is a hundreds of stories woven together. And in the yesterday's session, when we were reading this and we were uh, having this teaching session on Bhagavatam, a very beautiful point came. It said that every incarnation of God on earth has a very deep purpose behind it. So, which means Bhagavatam is saying that even God, when he descends on earth as an avatar, like like Krishna, they have a very definitive purpose. If they have a purpose, they take human birth for a very specific purpose, then you and me also, when we are taking this human incarnation, we must also be coming here with some very strong purpose. But the only difference between a Krishna and a you is, Krishna remembers his purpose when he takes birth throughout his life. You and me, the moment we take the birth, we forget the purpose. That's the only difference. No other difference. You too are a Krishna. The only difference is we forget the purpose. The whole spiritual process, sitting at the feet of a guru, sitting in the sanidhi, in the company, in the presence of a guru, is just this. He or she will not give you the truth. That's your own doing. That's your own sadhana. You have to make an effort towards that. But he or she will awaken you towards your life's ultimate purpose. That's the only job a guru will do. To awaken you towards your life's ultimate purpose, period. And of course, show you the path here and there. <laughs> and of course, inspire you sometimes. When you are demotivated. <laughs> yeah. So, unfortunately, in this short time of this call, I can't awaken the purpose within you. But if you listen to my words very carefully, I'm giving a lot of hints here and there so that you too shall know your purpose. But then you'll have to hear it very carefully. The shravana, the hearing has to be very one pointed. And I assure you, if this one session you listen to the words very single mindedly, single heartedly, single pointedly, you will get a lot of indication towards knowing what your two, true purpose is. And once that is achieved, bingo. The troubles are now no more holding you. The journey towards freedom, liberation, ananda, joy, mukti, prema has begun. And now once this journey begins, nobody on earth has the power to stop it. Even you yourself will not be able to stop it. Let me tell you that. Once it starts, it's like a nuclear reaction. Nothing on this Prithvi can stop this. Your own will will not be able to stop this. Yeah. So be assured of that. Yeah. Be assured of that. With that, think deeply, meditate on the words that I'm sharing with you. Be awakened towards your own life's purpose. And then, see then. The motivation will never leave you. Then, even in the darkness, darkest night, the energy of the Surya reaches you. Though with the naked eyes you don't see the sun and the light of the sun, but even in the darkest night, the presence, the energy of the Ishvara is constantly with you, motivating you. It only happens then and only then. Once the purpose, you are awakened towards that, towards the purpose. Yeah. Yes. Now the answer seems complete. Meditate on this. Thank you. So I think if there's a live question, we can try and take a look at that. If there's any other way, we'll just proceed. Today, everyone is immersed in listening to you. Wonderful. <laughs> 
anything. <laughs> so let's let's go ahead then. We'll take one last question. Ji. So we just got one live question. If you would like to take it, sure. Let's take a look at that. Okay. So, so Katie, uh, she has asked. She's asking, are we naturally evolving, uh, and how can this support us? Hmm. This is simultaneously happening in life. The play of the nature, what we call Prakriti, and the play of you, because you too have been given a lot of power. Don't consider yourself weak or inconsequential or insufficient. So there are two forces working in life. When we talk about evolution, there's a force of nature working on you to make you more evolved, as we say in the new age, continuously, constantly becoming a better version of who you are. There's a natural force working, no doubt about it. Without that force, no progress can happen. This is half the truth. The other half is. That force has also been stored in your own heart when you took birth. Every child who takes birth, there's a force which is unlocked in this the heart of that child. Now, when you are able to, I mean, sorry, the force is locked in the heart of the child. As you grow in life and as you learn to unlock this force, which is the force from the within, and align this with the force of the nature. That's when your evolutionary journey becomes exponential. Not even sky the limit then. And then there is a lot of teja, which is velocity in this journey. We need that velocity. Why do we need that velocity? Because we don't want to leave this earth only relying on nature's process. You see, nature took millions of years to make us human. Millions of years of evolution nature took to make us humans. Now nature will take another million of years to make you awaken. Do you want to wait for that long? That's the question. Number two. Yes, we should be OK to even wait that long. But when the source code of this entire journey is already logged in the heart, why shouldn't I not try to open it, unlock it, and activate it? It's like a science five movie. That's the source code here. And if I'm able to access it and unlock it, and like you, you remember, I, I saw this very beautiful movie, Avatar. Yeah. There was a scene, I, I'm just remembering of a visual from that movie, where uh, they go to the nature, to the forest. There's a beautiful tree in the forest, the tree of Mother Nature. With a lot of lights, that tree has a lot of light. As if when you look at that visual, it appears that this is really a living tree of the spirit of Mother Earth. They go, the beings of that movie, they go to that tree. And they plug in their, their I think, their tails or their ponies with the branch of the tree. It's like they plug in. It's really plugging in. So they plug in their own, uh, let's say, the. I'm not remembering it correctly, but let's assume their long hair and the tail of their hair, they plug in with the branch of the tree. The union happens. And in that union happens, something gets activated. The healing gets activated. The vision gets activated, the purpose gets activated, the energy gets activated. Yeah. If they don't do this, this activation will not happen. It was a very beautiful visual in that movie. That's something similar we are talking about today. That nature, like the Mother Earth, that tree is there. It's doing, it's 
it's giving you its abundant energy it's giving you already without you doing anything but that's limited imagine if you also take your pony and plug it into that and let the circuit be completed see the magic then that's the free will that's the source code of your heart that's the hard work that you must put in that's the one single minded pointedness that you need to be in life that's to awaken the devotion of the heart that's to be in love with this journey that that is to sit at the feet of your guru that is to talk to your shiva talk to your krishna and that is then the circuits get completed once this circuit is completed everything is taken care of now the propelling has started now the velocity has come and now the joy has come because now you're not just a passive being before that you were just passive being allowing nature to do its job great great space no doubt about it but we have something called rajas also in us the third element of the our gunas you need to activate that also when all the three gunas get activated and are in a perfect balance that's when you transcend and some other day we'll talk about it in detail but for now understand only passivity will not help only activity will not help combination of both this is needed that's when the circuit gets completed i know i don't know if it makes sense to you but understand active and passive they need to come together to complete this circuit. That is what probably in Chinese say yin yang, and in Bharat we say shiva and shakti. Both need to come together. So nature is shakti. Your inner code is shiva. When both gets activated and gets united, shiva shakti, that is when the mukti, the liberation happens. Think about this. This answer is a little bit coded, like the source code in your heart. When you meditate on this, it will get decoded in your consciousness. I'm sure of that. Yeah. Hope it helps getting. With that, looking at the time, request all of you to please open your cameras and eyes of the camera and close your physical eyes yeah so one eye of the camera needs to be opened your physical eyes need to be closed just sit just sit take a deep inhalation and deep long inhalation Deep inhalation and let go. Deep long breath in. And release it. Just be here. That I spoke, the words that you heard, let them go deep in your consciousness. Every word carries a certain energy, certain vibration of the speaker. Make use of that. 
In this moment, in this deep silence, that you have heard, start to settle in your being. allow this to happen. Deep gratitude in your heart for your Ishwara that you believe in, that you connect with. Gratitude aged for the Gurus for your own life. Deep gratitude that you are walking the path. Your blessed to walk this sacred path. Feel this blessing. And with joyfulness on your face, slowly open your eyes. Om Tat Sat. Om Tat Sat. See you all, to be with you all, this last one hour and this journey itself. It feels a sacred moment whenever I'm with you, even with the help of the technology, it still feels very sacred. And it's all because of all of yours pouring in your deep presence that this sacred energy gets created. A small advice to you for next sessions is use good quality headphones or speakers when you listen to me because this sound is very important for you to allow this sound to enter into your system. Do not use any substandard quality speakers. You will miss something. Number one. Number two, always keep the volume of those speakers a little high. If you're comfortable listening at, let's say, volume number 17, listen to me on volume number 18, just one point higher. Yeah. The sound, the words will really help you. Yeah. With that, life is joyful. In Shiva's grace, in Krishna's bhakti, in Hanuman's presence, in whichever Ishta you love, life is joyful, life is beautiful. Stay connected with me, with each other, with the Sangha, and we shall meet very, very soon. Om. Oh.